Just making sure we're being recorded. Otherwise, uh, this is for not. In the studio today is Mr. Mike Carcomo. Did I say that right, Mike? Yes, Good Carcomo. morning, sir. Carcomo. Good morning. Okay, I'm sorry. Good morning, Mr. Mike. Uh, here from uh, All About Fire, Inc. Uh, give us a call at 855-693-4897. You can give uh, Mike a question or um, myself or Mr. Alonso, or you can email us at realestaterantradio at gmail.com. We won't get the email. There we go. We won't get the email during the show, but uh, uh, in in uh, uh, future shows, we'll we'll get your questions on the air, and uh, we'll see if we can answer it for you. If, if you ha have a problem or a story, um, uh, I think Mr. Alonso, how are you doing today? Anyway, Mr. Uh, Alonso, well, the truth, Alex, I'm feeling a little blue today. I got a, you know, I'm mourning a good friend of mine that that you know passed away last night, and. Uh, she passed you know, away. I it was sudden. It was a sudden death. Well, it was. Uh, she was sick of cancer. She was a good friend of my neighbor of mine, and uh, I want to give my condolences on the air, if I may, Alex. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, my condolences go out to the Ariano family. Please accept, you know, my heartfelt sympathy for your loss. May you find peace and comfort, knowing that you know we cared about your mom, and uh, may she rest in peace. Mama Gloria, descanses en paz, que estés en la gloria. Thanks, Alex. Moment of silence for her. And. Uh, in the house today, Mr. Mike uh, will be representing his company, and uh, well, it's not my company. It's oh, it's not your I'm company. I'm okay. No, I'm not. Well, I'm well, just a technician at the company. Rep representing the what? What it is that you do? <laughs> you you know what it is? What is it that you do, Mike? Well, uh, I work for a company called uh, Quad Band International and All About Fire. Uh, basically, there are two departments. Uh, we're a company that focuses on uh, fire prevention and. Uh, the engineering and maintenance on uh, kitchen equipment. Now, uh, thank you for joining us this, this morning, by the way, Mike, because uh, you had mentioned that you're working like on a two-hour sleep. Yeah, <laughs> at this moment, yeah, honestly. Uh, and that, a that's a very long day but and night, but, you know, sometimes you have to do what you got to do. Welcome yeah. to my world, Mr. Mike. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys that work nights, yeah. but I know how you do it. I need my sleep. Yeah. But, but the real reason is because... Um, you know, you need to have the, the restaurants that you're working at or the kitchens that you're working at vacant or, or not being used while you're installing some of these uh, uh, fire and sprinkler systems. Well, basically, it depends on the situation. Uh, most of the customers that we deal with is restaurants, so we try to be convenient for them. Uh, we do honestly do it in the daytime and nighttime. It depends on the customer, obviously, uh, cost matters at that moment at that time i see i see uh, what is exactly you guys are doing uh, well, Mike? Basi ba uh basically we do different services like in the fire protection side we do uh the kitchen equipment system servicing and installation uh these systems have to be serviced every six months if you have a restaurant or uh, there's certain requirements that you have to have if you're running a business like a restaurant uh, uh apartment complex uh, uh trailer park and the list goes on and on uh, so what we do is we try to cater on on management and uh, and servicing so it's not just uh, refilling the fire extinguisher the reason I ask is because I I previously used to work at a county facility where uh, I seen you know how the actual hands-on of how they do uh, the fire extinguishers and and boy, is it a it's a it's a job, you know. When you're we're so talking, you're talking about, about the plant where they refill them and stuff. No, no, actually, they go on site and they uh they take their they take their their truck with like a kind of powder coating that they put in the in the fire extinguisher and they refill them, you know, make sure that the pressure is uh is at the correct leverage, and then they're replacing. I'm talking about a building, a four a five story building where you know there's over 200 of fire extinguishers, and it's uh quite a it, it's quite a, a mission, you know, to go and find every uh, fire extinguisher and, you know, replace it, you know, make sure that it's the tags are up to date and and uh, and then the fire marshal will come out and inspect and make sure that, you know, everything was done correctly and that they're uh, at a certain uh, gauge pressure is at proper level. You, you got it down to a point. If you need a job, let me know. I'll call my boss <laughs> right away. <laughs> hey, cause yeah. you got it. But well, exactly. A uh, fire extinguisher is so important to be serviced. Um, a lot of people don't understand that these extinguishers, the powder hasn't been moved 
for a while because usually they say they stay in the same position. You know, uh, pressure does leak. These are uh, items that are uh, they're fallible. They can, yeah, you know, it's material that actually it's that and, it, and it could corrode and deteriorate. It corrode right? water uh, has uh, the the elements, the ambient uh, temperature outside matters as well. Um, but just to get into certain little requirements that we have to do, just what the fire uh, extinguishers. Uh, but we do more than that. We do the UL 300 systems for the kitchens. We do the uh, spray booths for um, for uh, painting facilities, for painting, uh, for, uh, painting facilities, cars. Vans that oh, so items that they actually so the the body shops need uh, fire extinguishers. Up yeah, there? actually they have a UL three hundred system and basically they work almost similar as a kitchen hood system. Wow, um, it's designed for. Uh, there's a link that's connected to the whole system, and uh, as so soon as it meets a certain degree, uh, the system this activates itself and that's I why see. uh that's why they're banned in certain areas there's the now they nowadays you can there's certain sections of of the cities where you're they're only allowed you know they're they're they have to be in commercial you're, spray you're, booths. you're talking about the uh the auto well, the in, auto body place anywhere there anywhere there's a spray booth anywhere there's a spray booth that has to be approved by the city and yeah. uh it's not a uh, you can just uh spray well, anywhere so it's a it's a complicated uh Wow. process that goes through that well you got air ventilation that matters a lot in there you got uh heat you know that you have to have the right the building has to breathe you know what i mean wherever they're spraying w what what you mean is that there is certain cities that allow you to do that uh i really don't know the the legalities on that but uh the reason that a lot of people don't have a spray booth is because it's pretty costly you know, we're talking about you're building practically a house with an air ventilation that breathes, you know what I mean, that inhales and exhales. And uh, now we're talking that it has a fire protection system, too, in case uh, any type of big fire would happen. It's already prevented. Um, but again, yeah, so it's so many different type of uh, areas that we cover, you know. Um, again, from the restaurant owner uh, to the landlord uh, of the property uh, to the to to um again trailer parks you know so many different areas that we cater to uh just to get into one short little topic uh like uh we do a lot of servicing on trailer parks a lot of trailer parks you know the landlord is leasing the 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 area out you know with with, with the housing and um, those those departments have to be have a fire extinguisher. Each individual has to have a fire extinguisher inside. Uh, we were talking about last time with you about uh, insurances and uh, and basically what will cover what what not cover. And this this again, we're in the United States. These programs and these organizations are created for the fact of saving lives. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. And uh, one of the crucial points is that a lot of people overlook about uh, fire extinguishers is that, you know, they're uh, they're the first line of defense or the front line, you know, for anything that that goes wrong in saving your property. And, uh, yeah, you know, get, in case of an emergency, pic, anything, got a you know, up of something here that was uh, actually on your website, Mike, um, of a fire. It looks like it started up at, up out over the hood. It looks yeah. like up on onto the ceiling. It's interesting that somebody even got this picture because it looks pretty hot. But uh here at the Real Estate Rant Radio, we try to cover the things that that are going on behind real estate, and you kind of covered that a little bit in terms of the requirements the city has. Yeah, uh, you mentioned you mentioned that they we need a fire extinguisher every forty feet. Yeah, uh, yeah. You mentioned a, a mobile home park. Yeah. Well, just to get into uh, uh, something that's related to you guys is basically the apartment complexes. Uh, you're a landlord, right? Uh, there are certain requirements and restrictions that this, some cities give you, uh, but there is state laws, too, that uh, we have to get certified by and we have to abide by to, to do our work. But um, sometimes it's lack of knowledge uh, what happens. Uh, so, like, an apartment complex, like you said, every 40 feet there has to be a fire extinguisher. You know, uh, each individual, if you're renting me a property and uh, you're giving me the unit, you have to give me a fire extinguisher with it as well. You know what I mean? These are little legalities that what can happen in case of an accident, you know? So it all comes down to money and liability. 
who is responsible. And not only that, Mike, but uh, there's uh, actual uh, certain ways to use that fire extinguisher. There was a whole class uh, when I was working at the facility where the fire department actually went to the facility and showed us how to use the the fire extinguisher. And actually, they talked about different uh, different kind of fire extinguishers. Of because I'm correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. They have different formulas inside the yes, correct. inside the correct. not every extinguisher is what do you think it's for you know uh, each extinguisher has labels on the on on the extinguisher like the abc extinguishers that are for wood trash uh and then b for electrical and c is for liquids or any type of flammables where you have a k-class extinguisher that is that is chrome the abc usually is red uh, a K class extinguisher that's chrome. Excuse me, Mike. We're, we're coming up on a break. Hold right. that thought. Don't touch that mouse. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more real estate rant. TicketSurgeon.com reaches at 855-WIN-4199. Did you get caught speeding, texting while driving, or doing anything else you weren't supposed to do? Give us a call. Don't miss work. Don't lose out on the money. Don't get any more points. What about your insurance? Let us fight for you. The TicketSurgeon.com at 855-WIN-4199. Are you watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. We are the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Coming to you on the RAND Radio Network every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen in. You never know what's going to happen. 855-69-THREE-GUYS. G-U-Y-S and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about what you guys <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Live from the Rant Radio Network, you're listening to Real Estate Rant with your host, Alex Alanis, and your co-host, Mr. Alonso Rodriguez. No problems, just solutions for real estate needs, hot topics, and controversial chat. All right, and we're back here at the Real Estate Rant at the... Uh, at towers? The, well, well, I'm starting to see the blessed grounds. The blessed grounds? Uh, at the towers of the Rant Radio Network. Uh, here and uh, just a quick shout out to the three guys rant and rant radio network for giving us the opportunity to uh, do the show and uh, empower our community and the and the folks in our community uh, with their businesses and uh, uh, strengthen their families and friends if you have and any questions make sure you give us a call at 855-693-4897 uh, give us a call and we'll try to answer any question the best we could uh, join us back is uh, Mike Carcoma. Is that right? Uh, Carcamo. Carcamo. Yes, sir. And uh, we were uh, discussing uh, fire extinguishers and uh, sprinkler systems. And uh, what else did you guys do, Mike? Uh, basically, UL 300 systems. And uh, we were talking earlier about uh, about the types of fire extinguishers, but I think we kind of jumped the gun a little bit. I wanted to know a little bit more about you, Mike. Uh, how did you get interested in uh, fire extinguishers, and how did you get interested in that 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 area of business? Uh, well, you know, it's sometimes it's networking. It's based off of who you know. Uh, exposure. A lot of people don't know about the type of work that we do. 
a lot of people don't know how much uh, effort it takes and how much studying it takes because it does require us to have certifications. Yeah, you look tired, Mike. I'll yes, tell you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very tired. You're working, but, you on, you're working on two hours sleep tonight? Uh, you know what? But I got to keep going. Go home, go to sleep three hours, and go at it again. Right on, right on. So how, how long have you been in the in the business? Now? Actually, I've been myself uh, in a business for four years. Uh, I've been a technician. Um, it's a lot of stuff that I could tell you that. <laughs> it was four <laughs> years ago. And yeah. there's there's certain certification that uh, you need to get. You, you were commenting about it. There's one in particular here. It says... Uh, uh, C16 and an E certification. Yeah, what is certification. that? Certification. Uh, C16 license is for you to do servicing on fire extinguishers. The state of California requires you to get a certification. That means you have to go to. Uh, you have to send a check, obviously for the application, and they send you to a, a location where they give you a manual and you have to read it, pass the test right away. Uh, right after that, they'll take a picture of your ID. A picture of yourself and uh, your fingerprint. Is and, it a uh, state certification? Yeah, it's, like? a state, it's a okay. state certification, and that allows you to uh, carry and uh, service and sell fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm, right that's right. for the C16. And, and, the, and the systems that you install yes, sir. as well. Well, that's interesting. Um, the health department, fire department, they don't get involved Yes, the uh, fire department is very involved. Uh, the health department is very involved. Yeah, actually, the cities get involved, too. Just to give you a quick idea when we do inspections for our installations for our fire systems for for kitchen systems uh we're required to do uh, uh plans and permits oh i see so you got to drop some plans as well yes sir um, i think we actually uh pulled the plan off your website um phil maybe you could uh take a look there and see um there was a plan that i pulled off your website last night and and i could see where uh you have the, some of the units and then where they lead off to and then where you have uh, all of that has to be thought out. Yeah. So, it, uh, so no, no situation is unique. Uh, pretty much. Well, you every know. situation is unique. I mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of these systems are pre-engineered systems, but it still takes a lot of uh, uh, thinking because not everything is the same. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There's yeah. A, there's so that's one of our plans that we draw up. Looks fairly simple, but at the same time, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And can you uh, elaborate what what is that or what particular? Well, right there, what, what you're looking at. There? What you're looking at is a kitchen hood system, and basically what that is is in case if there's a fire under a, a restaurant, uh, if they're ki if they're cooking, and there's a fire, basically the system can activate by itself or you can activate it manually. So the system has a link inside the hood. And these links reach up to 450 degrees. Uh, they melt, and the system comes uh, and drops the the agent uh, right there. Uh, the picture before that, there is a pull station. You can actually activate that as well uh, manually. So let's say if there's a fire, you come and you pull in that pull station, and the system is designed to uh, drop the chemical and the agent, so it can make sure. And that's the bottle right there. And that's the head mechanism right there on the far right. Is that where uh, activates all the sprinkler system well, as well? Yes, is that uh, uh, everything is uh, connected together. So more likely, if we if the system dumps, then that's what we call it. You know, when it drops the agent, uh, the the fire alarm gets connect uh, get, gets uh, activated. Uh, the fire department get usually contacted if it's connected to a fire alarm. Uh, and then uh, the health department gets. Uh, so, so if it goes it. off, the the nine one one is called automatically. Automatically. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. That's so that's part of the system. Well, remember that while I was telling you, there's plans and permits. Well, those are codes and restrictions that the state and city gives us. Now, um, who's responsible for putting this stuff in? Is it the business owner? Is it the, the, the building landlord? Well, there's two responsibilities. There is responsibility on the. Uh, landlord and the the, the renter that uh, we could say the tenant, tenant. The tenant um, on it. if you're leasing the property as a restaurant and the restaurant doesn't have these systems then basically you're liable at this moment at this time uh, the reason for it is because well I mean the landlord is liable because when you rent something you have to rent it at, at working conditions I can't tell you well I'm gonna rent it to you and it's halfway thing but if the restaurant owner gives you something that's up to code and during the time that you're uh, in, in, in service, you know, uh, certain codes change and you have to do certain adaptations or whatever the scenario is, then it's the uh, 
tenant's responsibility to do that, those changes. And Mike, and one question uh, before I lose my chain of thought. If someone had just uh, leased into a, a building that's going to open up a restaurant, <laughs> uh, is it something that you, you can come in and do and, and check out their, their hood, their ranges, and their... We just lease one out. That's why Well, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm asking because, <laughs> I, I mean, in my work, my, my head's working right now, yeah, Mike, exactly. and I'm kind of saying... We're going to pick your brain, Mike. And yeah. uh, So, so uh, is that something we can do? Call yeah, you in and course. you can go check out the ranges, the sprinkler system, all that, and... And give us an idea of what's in working order or not? Pretty much. Uh, we cater a lot to restaurants. Our focus is mostly restaurants. We do a lot of department stores. We really don't do that much uh, residential, but we do do rental properties, and we do do a lot of uh, trailer homes. The reason for it is because you're running a business, and if you're running a business, you have to be up to code and re uh, requirements. But, yeah, answering the question that you're asking me, yeah, we can show up, and we could check everything out. Our sister company, Quad Band International, actually does all the kitchen repairs on all kitchen equipment. So from picking up your used oil uh, for free uh, – to doing your fire extinguishers, to doing the, repairs. The fire oil? Yeah. To, the checking, to checking the traps also, the to grease check, traps. Traps, that. anything that so, has to deal with your kitchen. So pretty much you can tell us this is what needs to be repaired, this right is what away. you need to change out. and We, we charge a uh, service charge to go out to the restaurant, and what we do is we provide you a full diagram and diagnostic on all the equipment. So it's something that you can analyze, and when you're doing any type of bargaining or anything like that, you can use that as leverage because now well, you can say, "Hey, th look. that's that's good to know." Because like Alex said, now I'm gonna come off like Superman, you know? I'm gonna <laughs> pull the thing, and now I'm gonna say, "Like, wow, oh, by the way, we need to check this," you know? Well, look, I'm, gonna tell, you, uh, I'm gonna tell you very clearly: knowledge is power. Sometimes the situation, it's really easy to take care of it, but if you don't know how to do it that's something that you're never going to be able to take care of it. Now, if you got somebody that knows the industry and can take care of the industry, that is a beautiful asset for you because now you're saying, look, you're my accountant. You do my accounting. There's my maintenance. You do my maintenance. You know what I mean? So you're running a business. Yeah, here's and, the, here's and, the chef. And, and that's yeah. a th this is a purpose of us doing these shows, you know, to network with people and actually get educated and learn more about what different people do behind the doors of – a real estate transaction and anything that goes involved with it. Yeah, with and, and our, the our, motto, our motto is to ensure the public trust. Yeah. You know, um, that kind of brings me to a story you told me yesterday, Mike, um, about you guys were sitting at a restaurant and the fire marshal happened to walk in. Uh, give us a little lowdown oh, on well, that. Oh, well, you know, sometimes again. I mean, not not it's, to it's badmouth anybody, I'm not, right? I'm, I'm not, uh, we're talking, I'm going to be honest. You know, we're talking about a situation that happened. I don't want to say what city it is because I don't want to put nobody in blast. But a uh, fire marshal showed up. Me and uh, another colleague were eating. And uh, sometimes uh, the fire department has a lot in their hands and they can't properly train on everything so it's upon really you can't depend on the fire department to tell you what to do you have to as a landlord you as a tenant need to know what's going to happen you know because it all comes down to liability you know and uh just to give you a scenario we're eating i told uh, my colleague i said look he's gonna go look at the extinguisher and he's not gonna look at the stuff that needs to be looked at and uh, he walked in there. He said, oh, everything is okay. When I just got done checking the extinguisher, and uh, I knew it wasn't okay. So I, I approached the fire marshal, and I asked him a question. I said, hey, you just out of curiosity, you know, uh, how many times does this have to be broken down? And what I mean by that is opened. And he's like, oh, uh, every year? And that's wrong. Every six years, a fire extinguisher has to be opened up. The chemical needs to be taken out. The, the cylinder needs to be tested to make sure it holds the pressure and holds all the stuff that it needs to hold and then recertified. And I said, how do you know if something has been, you know, uh, broken down? And he goes, uh, by the tag? Yeah, he's correct by the tag. But there's another way that we know. We put a collar. Every time we take off the head from an extinguisher, we put a collar on it. And that defines that we opened it up because we can't get that collar in like nothing. So, again, you know, it just... Maybe improper training, um, but again, if you're running a business, don't rely on the fire department to tell you what to do. You, as a property owner or tenant, you guys are running a business. You guys gotta know what's going on. And again, it's it's it's, it's lack of knowledge because there it's hard to get that knowledge if you don't know where to look for it. 
And Mike, and, and that brings another question. Is that the balloon test, what we call, or what is a balloon oh, okay. test? Okay, well, yeah, that's uh, a little different, but let, let, I want to kind of touch on, on a point that you just made. We, we definitely support our fire department. We don't want to badmouth anybody in no. the fire department. Excuse me. Shout out goes but to Captain Clark of <laughs> Commerce uh, Station. Yeah, and, F and FHC <laughs> here at uh, the Rant Radio Network. Um, but I, I did want to say mention that, like you said, we cannot depend on the fire department to take care of these responsibilities are, are really the landlord and the business owner's responsibilities. Yes. The fire department, you know, they're trying to do the, the job the best they can. They try to come in and uh, uh, make sure that there's no problems with fire on, at these situations, no loss of life, you know, and and you are actually taking care of the next level. You've elevated this, the situation. Well, you know, th th there is no, too many people don't know about it. That's the thing. It's an uh, unspoken thing. All right, and we're coming up on a break. Don't touch that mouse. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more Real Estate Rant. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra-modern, ultra-clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today, or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. The experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. We are the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Coming to you on the Rant Radio Network every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's, the you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen in. You never know what's going to happen. 855-69-THREE-GUYS, G-U-Y-S, and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about what you guys are. <laughs> Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. Live from the Rant Radio Network, you're listening to Real Estate Rant with your host, Alex Alanis, and your co-host, Mr. Alonso Rodriguez. No problems, just solutions for real estate needs, hot topics, and controversial chat. Welcome back uh, here at the Real Estate Rant Radio. Uh, we have uh, joining us today in the studio, Mr. Mike Carcomo. And man, I Carcamo. I mean, yeah, I tell you, I keep messing that up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Carcamo. You've been sleeping two hours. Yeah, you know what I have, and that's the problem. You know. Make sure to give us a call if you have any questions at eight five five six nine three four eight nine seven. Yeah, and if you get on the show, uh, we do have a gift card from Stephen Steakhouse. Uh, they're located in the City of Commerce. Uh, compliments of Carlos Cruz and Bell Gardens Chamber of Commerce. We also have, if you get on the show, if you happen to call us. Uh, we also have a teeth whitening treatment from Garden Dental. They're located at 7218 Garfield Avenue in the city of Bell Gardens. 
Uh, give us a call. Give Mike a question. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, when I was interviewing Mike yesterday, uh, I learned a lot just sitting there talking with you, Mike, f- uh, for a little while. Uh, we were talking there over lunch, and um, there was so much to talk about. You know, the out- our so outline. Much. Yeah, our outline actually got pretty large. Uh, we've had other guests on the show, and your outline is actually almost twice the size. Well, so much information. Again, you know, we're talking about money. We're, we're at the end, we're talking about money. Yeah. Who's liable? Well, not, only, for not only that, I think your your industry has to do a lot with uh, saving lives and, you know, preventing a uh, disaster from happening. Yeah, exactly. That That is a big aspect of it. But believe it or not, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, if you don't take care of as a business owner, you know, accidents are going to happen, you know. And again, these things are pre-engineered to to prevent for anything being done. So if the state is telling you to do something, you know, and telling you, hey, look, to put this system in, it's for a reason, you know what I mean? It's to save lives, but at the same time, it's just for your your protection financially. I'm curious to know, uh, right here on the outline, you have a Carnitas incident. What is that Carnitas incident? <laughs> I, was, I'm like, I was just about to bring that up. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> dying to know what happened with the Carnitas because that's one of my Tell favorite Tell us about foods. the Carnitas uh, incident. Well, th- there was uh, this situation where we had a fire. The fire department gave us, uh, the fire marshal gave us a call. We had to show up. We uh, installed the system. We did everything to it. Well, uh, when we showed up, uh, there was a fire. And well, well uh, you mentioned you mentioned the, the the business owner called you and was no 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 the state the, the, the fire, fire marshal oh the, the fire department oh, because they saw our tag and they know we installed the system oh, so I see. Okay. they give us a call right away uh, so they want to know what happened you know so we came into the field uh, right away when we walked into the building we saw that the hood system didn't go off and uh, I was kind of bombarded you know i was like oh wow i did something wrong here yeah, but yeah. then i started looking on to the far right side of the of the kitchen and the fire was on the far right hand side and what ended up happening here is these restaurants have these hoods and these hoods are to do two things ventilation of air and to uh, isolate the 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 fire so anytime there's a fire basically it holds it under and contains the fire under that hood well, what this restaurant decided to do is to get a propane bottle and uh, a kitchen appliance and uh, put it next to the hood, but not, not, not under the hood. Not underneath. And, it. And, and remember, the fire protection systems that we install are under the hood, and again, it's because it's protecting the fire. You know, the kitchen's appliances. And they're cooking carnitas in a big pot. Some oil got into the fire. Next thing you know, uh, it hit the ceiling. And if you look at your house or anywhere, the ceiling is made out of wood. Mm -hmm. And it caught fire. And uh, as soon as we saw that, our system didn't go off. And then uh, the fire was right next door, uh, next to the hood. The fire marshal just told us, hey, you know what? It's nothing... Don't 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 worry about it. There's nothing with were you. They, yeah, so were it was, they were they cooking the carnitas struck. in the in the large castles? Uh, yeah, 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 pretty much. Castles. And uh, <laughs> don't do that in an enclosed area. You know, you guys, yeah. if you guys ever decide out, to out do carnitas, I have backyard, to do it in the yeah. backyard. I, I Always have an extinguisher carnitas. with you. You know, it's yeah. so important to do that. Well, anyways, make long story short, the customer lost over twenty thousand dollars because the insurance company didn't pay him a dime. The reason for it is because it was negligence. You know, I mean, something that had to be required by the state was not done. So, you know, it's, it's again, that's what I mean by this is a business and this is money. Yes, the systems are great to save lives, but if you're just choosing to ignore or, or not pay attention to certain little things. And, Mike, tell us a little bit about unlicensed systems. Unlicensed systems. With well, on, they're, they're, um, we're always required to take out plans and permits for the installations that we do. Uh, the reason for that is because we have to test the system and we have to draw plans and permits, like I explained before. A lot of restaurant owners, what they do is they uh, get an unlicensed person to come in and install these systems. Uh, there was a fire just recently, and the, c- the cylinder that was installed uh, had just air in it didn't have nothing in it. And you mentioned there was a reason for that. Um, tell us a little bit about the balloon test. Oh, well, basically, when we do our inspection, our inspections with the fire department, we put balloons on all the nozzles. And bas- if you go to the diagram, if you look under the, the there you go, yeah. see the kitchen, the appliances on the bottom, there's little nozzles that point right under it. We put balloons on there, and then we take off that big cylinder, and we put an air cylinder, and we fire the system off. We, we, we act like 
there was a fire. So we cut the link, see if it works automatically, and then we pull it manually to see if the system goes off. And when we do that, air goes into the lines, and basically just to show that nothing is extracting the, the, the system, and uh, the balloons just blow up. All the balloons fill in the different fill areas. Air, all the areas, so that proves that the mechanism, uh, the mechanical, and everything is working. All the airlines are clear, clear and, and everything. things are going to... Well, so then you replace it with the one with and the And then we take, we, take, uh -huh. we take the cylinder off that we had air in it, and then we put the actual cylinder in there, that it's a new cylinder. Uh, all the cylinders has a serial number, so the fire department knows what's new, where has it been. Every time it makes a movement, it has to be registered. Uh, but again, if you get an unlicensed company or you don't get somebody that knows what they're doing, you know they might do some harm and put an air cylinder. Well, well, you're saying there was an incident where there was a fire and they, they, they failed to put the, the, the canister in with the chemical. It was just air. It just air. So it went off and it didn't work. Yeah, obviously. Uh, that customer lost around forty-eight thousand dollars because the fire department showed up, had to put the fire out. Um, again, insurance and company didn't cover anything. Yeah. So the insurance companies, uh, we were kind of talking about this uh, before the show. Uh, I felt that it would be um, prudent for the insurance companies to go out and check these things oh, as well. Oh, well, basically they do. Because they're getting premiums. They're, they're, you know? they're, they're, they do send an investigator before and after. Some insurance companies don't. It depends on who you're carrying with. I really don't know who well, does what, but you, they do 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 that. You know. Do you, you guys give out a certification after, right? right once you did ins inspect that all the fire extinguisher, there's some certain type of uh, certification where you guys give the client or you could present to the insurance well, company. What we do is uh, we provide them with, uh, obviously, a receipt, and then we put a, a tag that has all our information, like from the insurance to our address, our contact information, and our license number. So that's what the certification that we put onto it. But, again, if you don't have uh, no certification, you have to create a fraudulent one or... Can't do it. And there's uh, state guidelines... Uh, Concerning tags on extinguisher refilling? Uh, yes. Can um, you elaborate on that a little? Basically, uh, like I explained before, every six years, an uh, extinguisher has to be broken down. Every 12 years, uh, a cylinder needs to be hydro tested. Uh, these are requirements and uh, certifications that you have to do have in order to do these tasks. Um, again, if it's upon the technician to inform well, his customer these uh, obligations. If, if the system goes off, you know, most of these kitchens, if you look at some of the photos that we've been putting up, uh, they're gas units. Yes. Does that gas keep keep going? No, actually, our system, again, if you're doing everything right, we have we connect a shutoff valve, and that's connected to the gas. So when the system goes off, the gas shuts off automatically as well. Wow. So, again, it's so important to take plans and permits out. Uh, these so so it, does, it does three things. It calls 911. It, it sets off the chemical uh, to retard the flame, and then it shuts off the gas. Yes, sir. All, all in one shot. That's pretty That's pretty impressive. Yeah, so this is definitely not one of the areas where we want to cut corners on a restaurant, you know. Yeah. So no, definitely not. And, and we, we're actually seeing some, uh, there's been some fires here locally. Um, I know that uh, there's a restaurant there on Whittier Boulevard. Um, I believe it's Polly's Pies. They, yeah, they, they just they, had a fire. They shut down. I, I don't know what the what the uh, particulars were of that particular fire, but it it did say they have a big sign in the front that said they had a fire. Mm -hmm. So so it's interesting to s to know why it's been taking so long for them to rebuild. Probably because of negligence. I'm thinking. Uh, there's a lot of times there's negligence. Uh, maintenance is is very important. That's all the state is requiring you to do: install what you need and do maintenance to it. So, so how often do you have to go out and check these things out? Uh, well, the UL 300 systems, the kitchen hood systems, and the fire, uh, the spray booth systems is every six months. The extinguishers once a year. Oh, once a year. Okay, so they they call you out um, as a uh, subcontractor, right? Or as a, uh, I mean, you're, you're contracting, but they're calling you out to to certify those things. Yeah. Who is who is asking them for this information? Is it the state? It's a state. It's a state. Okay, state. so it's a state. The state is asking them. They have to apply get the certification from a reputable company, licensed company, yes. and then they, they respond to that uh, information with your certification. Yes, sir. Right on. But so it, it makes us, it just don't forget, just because I'm giving you a receipt, th that receipt means a lot. 
uh, saying that I tested everything and that everything is working. And if it doesn't work, our company is liable as well. You know, earlier you, you asked about, um, or, or actually, I think Alonso had mentioned about the oil. Um, do you guys, where does it, what happens well, well, to the oil well, after after it's used? After it's um, the used oil, Quad Banner International is our company, our sister company that takes care of those services. Uh, basically, we pick up the used oil from uh, the restaurants. Y- you guys do that? Yeah, too? we actually, our sister company picks up the oil. Oh. It's a free service that we provide, and again, we would provide other services like. The servicing of extinguishers free. So if we pick up your used oil, uh, we actually do your extinguishers free as a restaurant owner. Oh, wow. We do other services like uh, refrigeration to oven repair, stainless steel work. Um, so, again, uh, we are a full-service company. So so what happens to the oil? You're getting back to yeah, that question. Ask that question. <laughs> like, are you avoiding us, Mike? I know. Uh, I talk about aliens recycling aliens it all the time. Yeah, you know? Nowadays, I know that uh, they use some of that uh, vegetable oil for, like, cars or like uh yes. stuff trying like to recycle that. recycle it, you know, what's up with well, that? Well, our, our company has to make a revenue. So what we do is we try to charge you guys uh, lesser prices, but we try to make our money back on re- the recycling of oil. Uh, we have a client that is a part of a uh, uh, dog food manufacturing, and they make dog food out of it. What okay. they do is they clean the oil out, they heat it up for four days, and uh, they, uh, they filter it for five. We're, we're coming up on a break. Don't touch that mouse. Hold, hold that thought, Mike. Aliens took it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more real estate brand. Oh, man. The Ticketsurgeon.com reaches at 855-WIN-4199. Did you get caught speeding, texting while driving, or doing anything else you weren't supposed to do? Give us a call. Don't miss work. Don't lose out on the money. Don't get any more points. What about your insurance? Let us fight for you. The Ticketsurgeon.com at 855-WIN-4199. Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. We are the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Coming to you on the RAND Radio Network every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen then. You never know what's going to happen. 855-69-THREE-GUYS. G-U-Y-S and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Are you watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. Live from the Rant Radio Network, you're listening to Real Estate Rant with your host, Alex Alanis, and your co-host, Mr. Alonso Rodriguez. No problems, just solutions for real estate needs, hot topics, and controversial chat. Yes, welcome back to Real Estate Rant Radio here at the Rant Radio Network. Uh, again, you can give us a call at 855-693-4897. You can uh, ask Mike a question or myself or Alonso, you can ask a question if you get on the air. We do have... Uh, a $25 gift card or a free teeth whitening. It's actually $250 uh, value teeth whitening uh, here at Garden Dental in the city of uh, Bell Gardens. <laughs> and uh, compliments of Carlos Cruz and uh, Bell Gardens Chamber of Commerce. Uh, 
Joining us in the studio today is Mike Carcamo. I think I got that right. Yeah, that you right? Hey, yeah, the Carcamo. third is the charm. There right? it is right there. And, uh, there it is. At uh, All About Fire, Inc. and a sister company with uh, uh, Quad Band International. We were talking about uh, recycled oil and uh, they, they make dog food out of it. So yeah, now, I want to avoid this question. Now, so now, now, we, now we got deep fried. We got some deep fried uh, uh, dog nuggets, right? Yeah, uh, pretty much what they do is they make uh, deer food out of it dog food cat food if you know or look at your animal food product is mostly likely been deep fried you know it's it's good oil it's nothing bad with it as long as it's been and it's through its process well i don't have a dog but i think they like that deep down crunch you oh, know the, yeah the, you know, I know, I know, I know. I like that fried chicken. You know, so the fried like Twinkies, huh? The Twinkies is <laughs> yeah, coming oh back yeah, on the show. Fried, <laughs> <laughs> fried Snickers bars, right? <laughs> um, Mike, uh, we talked yesterday about rag and tag. Tell me what that's about. Rag and tag. There's a lot of companies that don't really care about you and don't really care about their job. They don't take no pride in their work. And uh, what they do is they go in there. We put a certification. What that certification is saying that we did our job. We tested the head, we tested the gas, we tested everything that needed to be tested. And what we're saying, we're giving you the thumbs up. Everything should work if there was a fire. Well, it takes time to do that. Not only that, you're dealing with oil, you're dealing with more labor, uh, more labor. And uh, a lot of companies, what they do, they just look at the system visually and uh, they'll put a tag and they'll charge you $50, $40. If you get a reputable company, any company, if anybody comes out to you and tells you, oh, I'll charge you $50, that's a red flag. You got to understand, we have licenses, we have insurances that we have to, there's overhead that needs to be taken care of. The cheapest I ever seen is 89 bucks for a service. Now, anything lower than that, you have to question it because that's really cheap <laughs> that, we're <give> <laughs> I mean, Mike, that we're giving I'm, for a service. I mean, you Mike, know? But 89 bucks is, is actually not a lot for a, uh, I mean, I'm I'm and I'm, and I'm reminiscing again. Hold on, I, year, I'm reminiscing right? again because, like, like I said, I actually worked in a facility where I was going around the building, the five-story building, over 200 extinguishers, and checking each individual, which took us all day. It took us practically the whole shift for them to get them all out and retest them again and refill them and make sure they're working. So for 89 bucks, that's a, a, a hell of a bargain. I mean, something like that is not going to run you 89 bucks. I'm sure and it's that's not every every again is 89 that a, bucks that's the kitchen system the, that's the big extinguisher that you saw in that big extinguisher uh, on the small one we're talking about ten dollars yeah but but uh something no. something as big as that I'm sure you guys have yeah. your prices that are and we have adequate to. for and that that's when you have to have, start asking questions you know why is this company giving it you know everybody's giving this rate and this rate and this rate and this guy is just giving me a ridiculous really low rate there's something wrong here, you know. So uh, that's what rag and tag means. That you know, just, I just come in there, I just so want not, your money. We're not doing anything. I'm not doing nothing. They're, I'm they're I'm lying the, to you. And I'm, that's something that a lot of people overlook. You know, they want to cut the corners, but like I said, it's very important because that's we want to make sure that that fire extinguisher is gonna is gonna uh, be in working order if something occurs. You know. Well, yeah, can I? That, well, that gives the us barbecue that, pit, that brings right? us to the barbecue pit yeah, incident. Exactly. Uh, we had a customer had uh, basically. He was renting a property. He had a, 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 a carne asada, and they were making carne asada. And the owner gave him an extinguisher, but never serviced it, you know. And there was a fire, and when the fire happened, basically what ended up happening in the extinguisher, he pressed it down, and just, poop, nothing came out. What ends up happening is these extinguishers, they sit for a while, and after a while they sit the, the, the chemical could settle inside of it. There's extinguishers that won't settle. We don't know its conditions, you know. I mean, a little bit of leak of air could cause that, you know. So the par partial of the house caught on fire. Luckily, insurance, you know, took care of it and everything like that uh, because he provided an extinguisher. But they were making an issue. The insurance company was making an issue because that extinguisher was not serviced. So, again, it all comes to liabilities and stuff like that. That's why these extinguishers have to be serviced. You have to open them up. We have to test the heads, you know, if it works. Because if your daughter's right there in that house and that house is on fire, you're going to be kicking yourself in the butt, knowing the fact that you could have saved your whole house, you could have saved your family maybe, just with $10. And one of the things is, Mike, that they're like parachutes, you know, because it's like, it's like 
you know, you want to make sure when you jump off that plane, that parachute is going to open. The same was the fire extinguisher, you know. Yeah, wow. But the thing is, you, you, you cannot test it, though. Like, you know, it's like you're running on on what somebody's telling you to to test it because once they're one shot use, right? Yeah. Well, so, we'll, we'll, we'll light up a little pallet in your backyard. Uh, yeah, so it's not like you can Let's test it, it and then spray well, but, it out and then put and, it back. Oh, it's working. Yeah, you and, know? Then it, and then it's used. Then you need another one, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's something well, that you need a reputable company. It, 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 it can be refilled. But again, if I you're going to pay somebody to do some... Just uh, be knowledgeable, be aware of what to look for. You know, if he's just looking at it and he just puts a tag on it. Those are, you know, next segment, if you guys want to have me or your your listeners want to have me come over here, I can go in more in detail what to look for and what not to look for. You want to run out that building if you see one yeah. of those coming. Well, <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you what I want to hear real quick because there's different kinds of fire extinguishers. Yeah. Um, uh, you mentioned uh, three three different kinds and then also what they cover. Mm, yes. Uh, um, what, what what are those, Mike? Uh, there's an ABC, ABC extinguisher. Uh-huh. It's a Halon extinguisher. There's a K class extinguisher. Actually, there's around 19 different ones. Oh, 19. Uh, yeah. Wow. There's so many different chemicals out there. Uh, I I am I'm, I'm specialized on the ones I'm gonna speak uh, I'm gonna talk about right now because each extinguisher has its own certification. Uh, it, the ABC extinguishers for wood, paper, combustibles. You know. Uh, then uh, B is for electrical, C is for like uh, liquids, uh, liquid fires, you know, gasoline. Then you got and, the and, halon. And grease too, right? I, no. I read well, some. Oh, that, grease that's, is not that's covered? Not, that grease is not covered in the oh. ABC. The little small red one, remember this, folks. The small red one is only for what's prevented on the picture. If you look at the label, the extinguisher, if you yeah. look at the label, it will show you three little pictures. You know, not not this big yeah, one. This is what we're talking about. Small. It has like a little light switch. Yeah, is and it? then and then, but usually, if it's red, it's usually for ABC extinguisher, unless it says for Halon. And what Halon is is basically for uh, electronics. You know, so it's a special chemical that will kill the fire when it comes to electronics. And then you got K class extinguisher. That's only for grease. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's so many different type of uh, uh, chemicals. And he, he I, threw, if you look he at threw the pictures, some more here. The actors, there's some different ones up yeah, here. Yeah, there you Carbon go. Carbon dioxide, foam. Yeah, so many uh, different ones. Vaporizing liquids. That's not even half of it. And it gives you a little description of what, what they what is. they will put, put out, right? Just read the extinguisher that you have, you know, and, and it'll give you a better idea of what mm. to do with it. I read somewhere, Mike, a uh, while back about the B-class extinguisher that basically, to get an idea of it, uh, somebody... Will tell you it's 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 concerning liquid because B is for barrel and usually anything that's transporting a barrel has to be done. That is that. You mean like JD? That's Jack Daniel, huh? Well, that's, <laughs> well no, that's no, I'm just talking about a barrel. <laughs> no, but like I'm saying, like a barrel that in that it, it, it's well, just they, like they, a, they're, they're, they're just the using canister? it. They use it just for symbols, you know, at the mm-hmm. end, you know. So it it doesn't. You just got to look at the picture. It's so important just to look at the extinguisher. You can see the picture right away. If you see a slash to it, that means it's not for that. You know, uh, if you see a... You can make it actually worse, right? You can make it worse. Yeah, you can make the the fire actually worse. Uh, uh, Powder, the old kitchen systems... Uh, so there you go, flammable liquids. Uh, yeah, there you go. So it, it, that's yeah, one of the things wrong. they told you. Yeah, you know? so it's A for for trash, wood, and then there's B for flammable liquids and gas, and there's a C for electrical, and then basically you got D right there. So that was just one of the acronyms to remember that B is for anything that's transporting a barrel. Barrel, know, yes. Liquid and... One way to remember. (laughs) Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Well, Mike, thanks for joining us. Uh, Thank you. That was all interesting information. Uh, The real estate world uh, thanks you because, uh, again, we're trying to, we're always trying to purport ensuring the public trust. Um, Try not to focus too much on the real estate agents. The real estate agents, you know, are out on the forefront and they're putting themselves out there to sell property. But there's a lot going on in the background. And that's what we try to focus the show on. And, uh, again, the Rant Radio Network allows us to do that, uh, giving them a shout-out, them uh, Mucha Muchelada and uh, Blasto Flavor. Uh, ha- haven't yet to try that. You know, have you tried the vaporized uh, cigarettes? No, have you tried I have those? not. And, and that would be, that, that's your friend, isn't it, in terms of uh, lighting fires and what have you? <laughs> <laughs> the vapor. That, that's the vapor way not getting burned. Uh, that's one way not <laughs> getting burned. definitely not getting burned on that. Uh, coming up next, we have uh, Sports Guru at 11 here at the top of the hour. Uh, I would like to thank my guest again, Mr. Mike Carcamo. And uh, you can reach Mike, actually. Uh, we do have a visual for Mike, but you can reach Mike 
at uh, 562 area code 244 2193, or you can email him at allaboutfireinc at sbcglobal.net. Um, there, you guys are located in the city of Anaheim, yes, we are. And uh, but you, you do all of Southern California, you guys yeah, go we do all Southern California. You guys go out of state at all? Uh, rarely, but we have. We do a lot of Marie calendars, so and frame boilers. So. I see. Coming up next week, uh, we have an addendum to last week's show. We had uh, Giselle Mata from the Home, uh, Home Defenders League. So the reason we call it addendum is we're going to give it uh, another try and uh, continue on with her information. She, she was an advocate for homeowners uh, that are losing their homes and to try and get a little modifications where the banks are not being uh, responsive or cooperative with uh, doing that for those uh, homeowners. She mentioned last week that there was over 682 uh, active foreclosures here just in the city of Whittier. So you can imagine here in Southern California, it can get into the millions. So uh, interesting. I uh, also wanted to mention some of the other shows here on the network. We have uh, Three Guys Rant, Culinary Trends, Kids and Sports, Keeping It Real, uh, coming up next, like I mentioned, Sports Guru, uh, The Dirty Truth, Sykes Accounting and Counseling, Cooper Talk, DM Narc Radio, uh, Will Roberts, Weekly Telegraph, The F Word, Mommy Talk, What Honesty Feels Like. Uh, usually throughout the day, there's Indie 104, Independent Music, uh, DJ Mix, and of course, The Real Estate Rant. Uh, we're up on time. Join us next week, Wednesday, 10 o'clock. See you then. Make sure you stay tuned for independent music on 104 Radio Rant Network. <laughs>